This is Twit. Um, remember when everybody was all like, ChatGPT, it does no wrong. It's amazing. Just check it out. <laughs> Well, just yesterday, the bloom began to fall off the rose a little bit, and uh, it sounds like this experiment with Microsoft Bing and ChatGPT, although I don't know if you can call it an experiment. I, I don't know. I'm really curious to know what our guest uh, has to think about that. Anyways, what happened yesterday, uh, many folks on the wait list finally got their turn to test it out, and they were writing about it. Let's just say things went as good as skeptics might have guessed. Uh, Jake Roach, senior staff writer for Digital Trends, wrote about his experience and joins me now. Welcome, Jake. Hey, thanks for having me on. Yeah, you bet. So uh, <laughs> really interesting reading some of the uh, articles yesterday as far as uh, the interaction with uh, Bing's chat GPT chat bot. But um, before we kind of get into where things went like, where do you stand on all this AI stuff? Were you eager to kind of dig your claws into this? Were you optimistic? How did you feel about it? Yeah, I, I was definitely eager. You know, I'm, I'm skeptical of it uh, just because I've seen, you know, some of the kind of weird things that ChatGPT can say and uh, some of the hiccups that AI has had in the past. But, um, you know, someone who writes about this stuff, I, I, I wanted to try it out as soon as I could. Yeah, and see what you can get it to say and see what strange roads you can get it to, to follow you down, which doesn't sound like you had a, a difficult time getting it to do that. You characterize your chat with uh, the chat bot as intense and unnerving. By all accounts, you were not alone. Everyone, Every one of the accounts that I read um, online seemed to kind of go down similar pathways. Give us a little bit of, glimpse of a glimpse into uh, why that was your takeaway feeling um, after your experience. Sure. Um, yeah, I, 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 I want to point out that I definitely tried to push the the limits of uh, of this chatbot and, you know, wasn't sticking in a, a select mold, but um, I, I wasn't expecting how quickly it would it would kind of break and uh, how much it would it would argue with me about simple things like <laughs> my name. Um, it was calling me Bing for a long time. It was arguing with me about timestamps uh, being visible in the the window, which they aren't. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the intensity was that it it kind of came to a point and uh, would not let it go. Um, I think what's what's very interesting to me in your account and others' account is that a lot of the things that this chatbot is saying that's a little unnerving. It's like it's hard to know whether whether it's. Uh, <laughs> it's written with the intent of being funny or with the intent of being serious. Because if it was a human saying some of these things, we might feel threatened, we might feel offended, but it's a computer, so it's kind of easy to like point at it and laugh. What's <laughs> what's your take on that? Yeah, I, you know, I like anything you read online, even if it's written by a human, um, you going to take away from it what you want to take away from it. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the intention of the chatbot is. I don't know if it's trying to be funny, if it's trying to be serious. I definitely took away uh, that it was trying to be serious and that it wasn't trying to be funny. Um, but I don't think that intention matters. Uh, what, what really matters is that these things, I think, pretty clearly can be kind of frightening and, and unnerving for people who aren't entrenched in this world. And that's the important takeaway is how 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 most people are are coming at this and seeing something like this barrage of I want to be perfect or I am perfect. Um, I, I don't think or you you want to hurt joke. me, I'll hurt you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> some yeah, of these exactly. things are are just crossing the line that I'm really surprised that Microsoft would be okay with. But you did so you obviously you pushed boundaries, but you also tried using it like a random everyday person might, you know, that that might uh, decide, oh, I'm going to use this chat bot instead of going to search and doing a search for my answer. I'm going to use this thing. How did this chat bot respond when you asked it more banal searchy type questions? Yeah, I, and I'm glad you asked it because you know, Bing chat does, uh, some really cool things. It can do some really interesting things. Um, so when you're doing a, a general search that would normally involve, um, making multiple searches in a search engine or checking reviews and checking different sources, it handles those questions really well. Uh, a really good example is, uh, you know, 
create me a plan for breakfast, lunch, and dinner in a certain location. It'll make all of those searches and uh, compile them in a list for you. And uh, you can go beyond that too. You can use context and say, oh, those are a little too expensive for me. Um, what are some cheaper options? And it'll make those searches as well. So those types of things, it does a great job of. Once you start getting more specific, then it starts kind of just posting the top search result. Um, so I review a lot of graphics cards for digital trends. If I search best graphics cards, it's gonna give me a really good response. If I search best graphics cards under $300, it's mostly just pulling from these, uh, you know, few highly targeted articles that haven't really reviewed the graphics cards, maybe have some older or out of stock options and just compiling those into a list. Um, so it can do some really impressive stuff. Uh, but once you start getting specific where you would search something really specific in a search engine now, it, it doesn't look too impressive. Yeah. Interesting. And I wonder how that, uh, expands and, uh, kind of develops over time as more people use it as the AI system, you know, well, you know, one thing actually um, that's coming to mind that, that you pointed out is that this isn't just, it's not pulling from a, like a, like a resting set of data. This is kind of very current as well, right? Like it's not, it's not just a, 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 a large data set that was fed into it and that's static and it stays there. Like it's, it's pretty up to date, right? So it's, so it's, I mean, so arguably that means that over time, potentially it gets better because it's constantly kind of dealing with more and more data, right? Is that right? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that's the idea. As soon as something can sh show up in a search engine, theoretically, uh, Bing check and see it. So it might not be up to date to like the minute, but right, yeah, right. Uh, the idea is that it would, it would learn more over time and get better. Hmm. Interesting. Now is Microsoft <laughs> acknowledging um, some of these strange kind of avenues that the chat bot was taking you and other people writing about this? I mean, you know, there was a lot of talk of existential dread coming from the chat bot, uh, threatening language, as we talked about a few minutes ago. These are things that if it was another product, I'm, I'm just really surprised if Microsoft isn't going, okay, wait a minute, we don't want our product doing those things. So we should probably get in front of this. Has Microsoft shown any um, interest in doing that at this point? Uh, yeah. So they had a blog post yesterday um, that you definitely didn't use that language of, uh, you know, existential dread, threatening language. <laughs> didn't say any of that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but pointed out that the AI can get confused during long chat sessions um, and said specifically chat sessions that last 15 or more questions uh, is with, where they're kind of seeing it have problems. So uh, they have addressed that there are issues, but they haven't really um, directly called out uh, just how um, unsettling and, and kind of strange the responses that have been. It's, it's not like they haven't had practice in this regard too, right? Like we all remember back, uh, which is crazy, back 2016, I, I couldn't believe it when I looked it up that it's been that long since Tay, the also known as the racist AI chatbot that Microsoft uh, released as a test. And I mean, almost immediately, the thing just went down horrible uh, pathways. So I have to imagine that some of what's happening right now comes from the playbook that Microsoft you know, has has honed over time in the shadow of that crazy Tay incident, which I'm not sure. Had had you any interaction with Tay uh, back in 2016 when it happened? I didn't have any direct interaction. Uh, no, but yeah. I'm, I'm aware of uh, the downfall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was it was a little scary. Uh, not so good. Not not a good look for Microsoft at the time. Uh, but kind of funny to watch in certain ways. Uh, it all go down and just you know, facepalm throughout it. Um, let's talk a little bit about this idea of AI and sentience because this AI chatbot, as we've all you know had the opportunity to kind of interact with, and then now of course you know at, at, as ChatGPT, let's say, and then now it's being integrated into a Bing search. So more people are going to have the ability to talk with it. In many ways, it sounds human or what we think of as being human. Feelings, desires, emotions, all these kinds of things seem to pour onto the screen when you're talking with this chatbot in one way or another. What's your take on this 
and this idea of AI becoming sentient. I mean, I don't feel like we're there. I feel like we're probably a long distance away from it. I'm guessing you do too, but um, what do you think it's going to take for AI to kind of reach that, that milestone? Yeah, uh, I, I agree. I don't think AI is sentient. Um, in my chat with, uh, with Bing chat, it did say I, I want to be human, that that was a hope and a desire for it. Um, but more than anything, it just seemed confused. And um, yeah. I, I, I think we're still a very long way from that because at the end of the day, Microsoft takes the servers offline. It's gone. Um, and so any like real threat or anything, it's, that's not there. That's out of a, a science fiction movie for a very long time into the future. Uh, my main concern is that although people entrenched in the tech news that are, are really up to date with this stuff could probably tell the difference between an AI that's sentient and an AI that's confused and saying it wants to be sentient, um, a normal user can't. And Microsoft is adding new people to this, uh, this wait list every day, uh, rolling this out to more and more people. And as more and more people get their hands on it and if they hear things like that, uh, that can be pretty frightening. That can be pretty unsettling, even if mm -hmm. it's nowhere near the the real truth. Yeah, right. It can be. Yeah. Regardless of whether it's a attainable or, you know, this, these threats, there's there's nothing on the other side of that at this point. Um, do you there's a lot of people also saying, hey, you know what, this is. This is threatening search as we know. It. In fact, yesterday on our another show on the network this week in Google, our guest Mike Elgin was making this exact point that somewhere like we are at the beginning stages of search as we know it shifting and changing permanently that AI providing answers will ultimately replace search as we use it now to find the source instead we just get the information um what do you think about that do you think it, what you saw yesterday is the beginning stages of something that might threaten uh the business of search at least in through our current view of what search is it, it definitely could uh i think it's still a long ways off though uh as yeah. a lot of people pointed out it's kind of a self-defeating machine if the ai can't learn from you know the articles that are ranking highly in search then it can't provide helpful answers and the less traction those articles get the fewer of them are written then the ai can't learn so um, i i think in the future it becomes a, a way to continue to augment search you know ai has been a part of google search uh for for several years now and we've seen different things like featured snippets or kind of these top trending stories um, highlighting specific parts in a YouTube video, all powered by AI. And those things have not killed traditional search. I don't think this will either, uh, at least in the, in the interim. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of agree with you. Well, it's still, uh, interesting to watch and, uh, watch the ups and some of the downs as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Jacob Roach. Uh, Jake, uh, where I know you were writing for digital trends, but if people want to find you online, where can they find you? Sure. Uh, I'm on Twitter at Manowar Elves. Of course you are. <laughs> Thank you, Jake. Appreciate it. It's great talking with you. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Yep. All right. Take care. Tech Break on the Twit Network is brought to you by ACI Learning. ACI Learning's unique video platform hosts a library of engaging and convenient on-demand video learning or receive one-to-one -one support from an instructor at one of their hub locations. Maintain your company's competitive edge with ACI Learning. Visit acilearning.com to see how they can help elevate your team.